I was greeted at a pair of stone columns that served as a gateway to the community. Strange creatures were carved into the columns in what may have been a different language. Not that it much matter to me. The dwarves who met me looked very similar to each other, and I quickly discovered that they were brothers. I'm Roaring. That's Glumbin, advised one of the dwarves, and I immediately forgot which one was which. We welcome you to the Bastion of Solon. As Bastions went, it left a lot to be desired. The dwarven community was constructed very chaotically. I could see a certain effort had been made to bring in materials from elsewhere and build some genuine housing. But for the most part, Damosile seemed to be constructed from animal skins. The central building in the community was fashioned of wood, which had likely been imported for that purpose. No other building seemed to be made from the same material. This was a huge log cabin, which seemed to serve as some kind of dining hall. Roaring and Glumbin took me to the dining hall entrance, but then advised that weapons were not permitted inside. I can't say I felt terribly worried as I surrendered toothpick to the pair. It wasn't going to do me much good. Once inside, I found that the doors either had a double standard or a very curious concept of what qualified as a weapon. Nearly every dwarf I met, and there were plenty of them, had a hammer strapped to his belt, which could have easily crushed my skull. The table was set for a feast, and each place setting included a serrated knife, which made toothpick look like, well, a toothpick. Various dwarves made their introductions. Lobin, how do you do? Skrillin. How do you do? Parvin, how do you do? I do very well, I told them all, as their names mixed together in a jumble. In due time, I was led to the hand of the table, where a rather eccentrically dressed dwarf surveyed the room. To me, he looked not unlike a shepherd appraising sheep. This, I was informed, was the leader of the family, and his name was Osrin. Osrin was clad in blue velvet with black trim, and be decked with all manner of gold and silver and bronze. While the other dwarves wore simple or practical clothing, Othrin was dressed to be visible. He had also surrounded himself with food. He was obese, even by dwarf standards. Doesn't anyone feed you? I was sat down next to him and given a full cup of meat and a plate full of meats and cheeses and fruits. I was floored by the banquet bestowed upon me. Go on, consume, invited Orshan. Nobody ever accomplished anything useful on an empty stomach. Grateful, I dug into my portion, and a number of other dwarves came to take a seat at the table, all merrily laughing and eating and joking about. Orshan's attention was elsewhere, and I was able to eat uninterrupted, which suited me just fine. I couldn't have wanted anything more. At some length, when I was mostly finished, the copulent old dwarf gave me what amounted to more popular welcome. You have arrived at the house of Solon. I am the master of the house. I hope you will find your hospitality honors our family. Thank you, I managed, swallowing a flavorful gulp of meat. I appreciate it. I wish I had a way to repay you, but I have very little to my name. A family's honor is its own reward, advised Osrin, thumping a pudgy hand to his chest. What brings a wandering human this way? It is unusual to find such one traveling alone. Oh, uh, y yes, I, I did arrive alone, but I was traveling most of the way with the caravan. I have come from the cloister of the Echo, seeking for a scholar who knows of the old world. Ah... A scion of the Echoes, mused the dwarf, with a glint in his eye. We've not seen one of your sort here in a Balrog's age. Uh, yes. I wasn't sure what he meant. Do you know where I might find a scholar here with knowledge of the old world? Is there a particular family I should talk to? Particular family? Friend, this is the Bastion of Solon. I blinked at him. Apparently, that was supposed to mean something to me. We are all one family, elaborated the dwarf when he saw that I wasn't following. The sons of Solon at your service. All forty-six of us. 
What a curious thing to think. This entire dwarven community was actually one individual family. Well then, I decided to cut to the chase. I have a question for you, and I'm not sure how to ask it delicately. The dwarf glanced about the room. I don't think there'd be any delicate folks here for you to offend. Did the dwarves break the world? This time, it was the fat dwarf's turn to blink stupidly at me. Did they what now? The dwarves, I attempted to elaborate. Is it true that the dwarf king went mad and slew the spirit of the fire and... Why are you laughing? Ha 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 You've been spending way too much time around orcs. He probably thinks the moon is made of cheese, too! Chortled another dwarf. Oh, it ain't! Queried a third. So where'd this come from, then? I saw that the dwarf in question had placed a piece of cheese over his face, wearing it like a mask. At length, the dwarves regained their composure, and Orsren began to explain. Orcs are... How shall I put this mildly? Primitive. I'll drink to that! Echoed a dwarf. Me too! Me three! Me twelve! <laughs> anyway... The story of the heart of the mountain is something the Nikwa made up to frighten children. We respect the Dunir, but our way of life is so much more alive than theirs. Nevertheless, in every generation of Nikwa, there are inevitably children who fancy going back to the mountain. The tale of the Mad King under the mountain was invented to dissuade such flights of fancy. But of course, the orcs got wind of it, and they take it as gospel. No, it was not we dwarves who broke the world. That was the work of the elves. Obviously, I was surprised, and more than a little ashamed at having blindly accepted the orc story. But now I had a chance to learn the truth. Will you tell me how it happened? Perhaps. But if we here are to share such a tale, we should know more about the man who asks. Tell us about your arm. It was uh, an accident, work. But I'm sure you'd rather I tell you what it means to me. I added quickly, before the dwarf could comment. He merely leaned back, expectantly. I thought back to the day it happened. The dwarf nodded, thoughtfully. And eventually, he took a spoon from the table. I made a clamorous noise, banging it against his goblet, until the room fell quiet. A song! commanded Osrin. A song for our honored guest. The room was quiet. Finally, at the back of the room, a single deep dwarven voice began to sing slowly and deeply, like a hymn. Gradually, a choir of other voices filled in, and the song of the dwarfs filled the hall. The soothing song came to an end. I'd at once been very focused on it, and yet so lulled by it, that I wasn't absolutely certain I'd stayed awake through the whole thing. Osrin gathered my attention by waving around a pipe in my face and began to provide me with a more succinct version of the tale. We believe that long, long ago, Orc and Elf were brothers. Only brothers can quarrel with such ferocity and spite. It really is a sad thing for a family to come to such a state. We wanted no part in that quarrel. The dwarf let out a puff of blue smoke that formed rings around my head. Where the elves were always haughty and proud. They thought themselves equal to nature, equal to the gods. The queen dared enter the eternal autumn, where only gods may tread. In doing so, she unleashed the wrath of nature upon the world, and all were forced to flee or else perish. The Nikua were fortunate. Many of our Dunia brothers chose to stay and defend, and all perished in the mountain. There are very few now. The dwarf trailed off a moment, staring off into space. I thought it best not to break his reverie, and so I sat, sipping my drink. 
and watching dwarves make various colors and shapes of smoke with their various pipes. The clouds of smoke amuse you. It is the main reason we chose to live here. The chubby dwarf informed me with a grin. It reminds us of home and the old world. They say that the pipe masters then had such wondrous stock, and that alchemist would use the same stuff to put on shows of light and color and sound. The sons of Solon await the time for such things to come again. Again? So you too think that one day there will be a way back? The dwarf nodded. Something like that. An old dwarf can feel in his bones. He considered me thoughtfully and added, Perhaps one day you'll come with us. The sons of Solon are family, to be sure. But that doesn't mean we cannot be welcoming to outsiders. Who knows? You could be the next master smith. Hey, did a caravan come through here tonight? The owner was a man named Samuel DeCair. They breezed through some hours ago. Must have other stops to make. Ah, I replied. Unsure why I had suddenly had the urge to see the bothersome trader again. Well, maybe I'll catch him next time. Follow our links below for more content and subscribe.